Good as we get ready to get our coaches and player conversation started for this year's ACC tip-off. Notre Dame is first in the room, head coach Mike Bray, along with Prentice Hub and Nate Leshevsky. Questions from the room? We have microphones that are roving around, and coach and players, we will start right in front of you in the first row. Dan Tortora, Wake of Call, DT.com. Coach, these last 18 months have been challenging, interesting. What have you learned about yourself? What have you learned about the team, not just on the court, but obviously off the court, having to play a season that was so unique? You know, I, I think uh, I speak for all the ACC coaches that, that we had a season and we had each other on a daily basis was therapy, quite frankly. Um, we were talking last night about how we practiced in masks which was a little unusual because it was hard to read your players. Uh, and they probably couldn't read me all the time. I had to pull my mask down to make sure they knew when I was mad or not, you know. And, uh, um, but that we had a season and we had each other, even in our own little bubble in the practice facility, I think was key to everyone's mental health, including the coaches. Now, we were disappointed we didn't have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. and We strive for that next year. But the... The togetherness of play, we played 26 games and we didn't have a pause. That is a heck of a year for us. I don't know how we did it, but we got through it. And uh, we're excited about having some people in the stands this year. Team, we'll stay on the left, about the third row to your left. And, and Mike, Luke Tecock, Raleigh News and Observer. Um, let's get this out of the way, an ACC without Roy, soon without Kay. You've been in enough of these meetings to know the kind of water those guys draw. What's it going to be like in this league without one of them now and without two of them next year? I couldn't wait to get them out of the league. <laughs> I've been waiting, man. Get out. Get out. Um, of course, spending time on Tobacco Road, obviously on Mike's staff in the 80s and 90s, and seeing the dynamic shift like it did in the spring within, like, what, a month of each other, I think? They both... Um, you know, I can relate to how powerful that is. I do think those programs aren't going to really go anywhere. Uh, I think they've done a great job with their head coaching hires. For me, though, Mike, and even Roy, I mean, obviously I work with Mike, Roy became a really good friend and a mentor, you know, to, you know, I was like that next generation of guys. And, and so uh, uh, I will miss Roy this year because, you uh, uh, there's a personality about him, as you all know, that kind of keeps you smiling. But it is a power shift, and the rest of, our not, the rest of us are not complaining at all. <laughs> Team, to your right, second row towards the right. That's, yes, right there. Sorry. Got confused by the uh, directions. Uh, that was kind of my question, so I'll just add on that. Can you, can you talk a little bit about just sort of your fondest memories you have with Coach K? I was there. I was I was there eight seasons with Mike, and um, we went to six Final Fours. Like that's that shouldn't happen, right? I mean, I was amazingly spoiled. Uh, he also hired me when I was a high school coach. I'm always uh, indebted to him to taking a chance on a guy and let me grow and understand and train me to be a head coach. I felt very ready in '95 when I went to Delaware. Uh, now you know he's a good friend and. We can drink good wine together on the road in the summer, even though I'll miss him. I didn't see him on the recruiting trail. I do hope that, and I think he will, stay engaged in college basketball moving forward. He has been such a wise and valued ambassador and uh, statesman for our game, and I think we're going to still need that from him. Still in the second row, right in front of you. Gaza with the Duke Chronicle, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on that last part. I know when Krzyzewski announced his retirement, you joked about college basketball needing a czar, and Krzyzewski was the guy for that. Have you had any conversations with him about it? Can you give us a little insight into that? Well, let, let, let's be honest about Mike Kay. Hasn't he really been the czar for 25 years? I mean, we're all trying to get a little bit of czarism, and there's, he never lives. He doesn't give us any but a piece of the pie. That's how great a competitor he is. Um, and, and now I think now with time, more time, um, you know, it's one of the reasons I got involved with the NABC. You know, he was an inspiration when I was his assistant. And um, so 
I, I think he'll I think he'll stay involved because he really, as you know, really cares about the game and he'll have more time to do it. Team to your right beyond the desks. You know, Neil with the athletic. Mike, along those lines, there's a lot of conversation like about what's going to happen with the NCA with the governance structure, but coaches don't seem to have a whole lot of say in the matter. Um, how problematic is that? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, there's going to be a lot on uh, Craig Robinson, the executive director of the NABC moving forward to try and have coaches get a voice. Um, I went through my role with the NABC board and president, and quite frankly, I was a little exhausted that we talked through a lot of things, but we never could move the needle much. Um, uh, I, I feel like it's the next wave of coaches and a Craig Robinson Obviously, the NCAA is going through kind of a constitutional convention as we speak. In the midst of that, I am confident that Craig can get coaches at the table a little bit more moving forward, and and my and Mike K, you know, that he would have a little more time to do that. So I'm hopeful of that. Let's go uh, in the middle, fourth row, straight ahead. Coach Terrence Oglesby, field of 68. You got two guys that have developed over the course of their career, Prentice Hub being one of the better point guards in the country. How has he developed from the time that he came in as a freshman to this point now coming in as a senior as one of the better point guards there is? You, you know, you look at Prentice and certainly Nate, you know, these two guys, we've been joined at the hip for a while. They played. We, we invested in them as a freshman and played, played them a lot of minutes. We took our punches because of it, but we felt – we were going to get return, and, I, and I'm really excited about this senior year. Specifically, Prentice has just gotten stronger, older, and really with my point guards, my veteran point guards, I can start a sentence and he finishes it. Or the other way around sometimes since he's played so much. But um, I've, I've really valued his leadership, uh, and he's been a warrior for us. He's been available. He doesn't miss practice. Um, it's I will miss these guys. You know, it's we've been we've done a lot together over the last four years. Let's go back to Dan right in front of you to the left. This is for each of you and coach. I wanted to start with you on this. Just name, image, and likeness, and and how you've seen it develop, and kind of what your maybe questions still are, and and for each of you as well. Well, let, why don't you guys start with it? Because they've they've dove into it a little bit. They just made some money on a basketball camp they ran. What'd you make? Six hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, hey, you take me to lunch on the way back today? Oh, my yeah. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Well, a little bit about that. Um, I think that for me, um, especially, um, it hasn't been like a main focus for me so far. Um, coach and coach and all the coaches have been saying like all that name, image, image and likeness things will like happen if you play good. So like we just got to, I think we got to more focus on like getting those wins and playing, playing, our, playing um, to our best of ability. So that people will want to want to like do spon sponsorship and, and partnerships with us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what Prentice said, you know, it's just playing, <coughs> playing well, get your name out there more, um, be more availability for you. But uh, I think, you know, with the camp we ran uh, with a couple of our teammates was really awesome. Um, being able to interact with the community and use NIL and that kind of aspect was, was really fun for us. July 1st, the rule changed over. So I had our each, de each athletic department now has an NIL staff, rightfully so, come in and present to these guys because there was so much out there on social media, deals being done. And at the end of the day, uh, one of the gentlemen on the staff said, you know, fellas, it's real simple. If you win, and for us, if we play in March in the NCAA tournament, I bet your NIL value goes up. It keeps coming back to that. Uh, but we've been very aggressive at Notre Dame, and it's been new to me. And I have, have a very open mind, and I want all of them to get what they can get. And uh, in, in a lot of ways, this camp that they ran and some of the things we've done, it's almost like taking another class. It's very educational. I know everybody just sees the money, and is that right, and is it going to screw up the locker room? It's very educational to, you know, do a deal and have to be responsible for it. So I think there's a lot of good out of it. Coach, our last question. It will be a quick question to your right in the back. Hey, Mike, it's C.L. Brown with the Raleigh News and Observer. Um, you mentioned your relationship with Roy. I kind of wanted to ask you about the flip side of that coin. What is it going to be like to see Hubert Davis down the sideline from you, a, a guy who you basically yeah. scouted and coached against him? You know, I just remember him being in my gym on uh, college game day, you know, and a commentator. 
And, uh, but he always used to talk about coaching, and I think looking down, it will be very different. There's no question about it. Um, but I think he's really a gifted young coach. He's paid his dues. Um, he certainly gets it. I thought he's done, I, I think the first mark of uh, Hubert Davis's good moves was what he did with his staff. Very impressed with what he did with his staff. So, uh, and then next year when you look down in Durham and in Chapel Hill and two different guys, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be different. But like I said, I'm, I'm gonna rather deal with those guys right now for a while than the other two. <laughs> Notre Dame, thank you. Good luck this season. Thank you. Folks, Duke is up in the room next.